Welcome back to Quadratics 1.3, Levels 4, 5, and 6. Solving different types of quadratic equations in different formats where we were trying to get something uh, to solve nicely with something squared equals a number. And what happens when we don't get that? Um, so far, we've, we've tackled ways to manipulate the equation so that it is, in fact, something squared equals that area. So here we have a level up from the previous one. So let me just write that out. I'm just going to zoom out of here. You've got it on your handout anyways. For those in my class, we've got x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 15. Now previously, we said we could probably figure out just going, going, oh, just take half of that, x minus 2. Um, and then we had to double check, is what's 2 squared? And we got to see, is that 4? And uh-oh, we've got a bit of a problem. It's not. So this is not x minus 2 squared. Can't say that, because if it was, the minus 2 squared would be 3 or rather it should be 4. So we seem to be in a bit of a pickle here. Let's see if we can draw out perhaps a perfect square box. In fact, let's just get a nice little template here. We'll go like this. We'll make it perfect. Uh-oh. Red's not the best of colors. That's so that's okay. All right, let's do this. We have a nice little square of all even dimensions as best we can. All right, here we go. We're going to get this as a perfect square. Now, I'm going to do my multiplication on the outside a little bit here. So I'm just going to move over a little bit, OK? So normally, I was multiplying on the right-hand side. This time, I'm going to multiply on the left-hand side just for the ease of organization. So we seem that if we can take this, we might be able to work with that x minus 2 business as a possibility, because it's 4 could be split in half. So let's try that and see what we get. x minus 2, x minus 2. Over here in the first block, we get x, box, we get x squared. x times negative 2 minus 2 x, and then x times negative 2 is minus 2x. So far, so good, because if these things combine, that makes 4x. But what happens here is negative 2 times negative 2 is plus 4. So if this is, it's supposed to be plus 4 here, it would work. It would be an x minus 2 squared if that was true. We would have x minus 2 squared if this last term was 4. Huh. Well, why don't we just do this? Add 1. Let's be really sneaky. Because 3 plus 1 is 4. But that means what we do to one side of an equation, we really ought to do it to the other. Because if I add 1, or take away one for both sides, it hasn't changed. So if I add one to both sides, that's still the same. Well then, that's OK. So 3 plus 1 is now 4. I can now say the left-hand side is x minus 2 squared. And on the right-hand side, we're going to see we get 15 plus 1, which is 16. Oh, look at that. It's now back to the previous stuff, like a level 2. So I can undo this with undoing the square root. Square root both sides. So we get x minus 2 equals 4, or x minus 2 equals negative 4. Seems to work. Add 2, add 2. x equals 6 is a possibility. OK, and then add 2. Add 2x equals negative 2. So here we get the two possible answers that should work, because basically 
we took something that wasn't a perfect square, but we are able to make it a perfect square by adding what we need to this constant term to both sides. Look at that. Ingenious. Let's try this one. This is number two. Over here, we have x squared minus 10x plus 30 equals 69. Well, so far, the rule has been if we quickly take half of the 10, we kind of have a sense of where this thing goes. So I'm just going to draw this out like this. I guess I should have moved over a bit more. That's okay. I'll make this into a perfect square, as it were. And again, I'm going to just mold, grab these things, just move them over a little bit here. There. Okay. So we kind of had the sense that if we could take 10, we kind of knew this was like x minus 5 and x minus 5 because it was negative 10. So we're trying to get a target of x minus 5 squared. It makes life a lot easier. Okay, so let's see what happens when we do the multiplication. We get x squared minus 5 x's minus 5 x's and then 5 times negative 5 is positive 10. 25. Okay, so if this was a perfect square, it would be x squared minus 10x plus 25. We are currently, we got to look up here, we're currently at 30. Um, so this time we want to make it 25. So we're going to take away 5. And we'll do that one thing, we're going to do it to both sides. Ooh, sneaky. So now 30 take away 5 is 25. So this makes it a perfect square of x minus 5 squared. And now we got 69 minus 5, 64. Well, doesn't that appear to be nice? Because now we've got the situation. We have a perfect square and, conveniently, a perfect square. We're going to undo the squares, okay, by square rooting. So we have x minus 5 equals the square root of 64 is 8. Or, we have also said before, x minus 5 equals negative 8. I'm going to add 5, add 5, x equals 13. I'm going fast now. Add 5, add 5. x equals minus 8 plus 5, negative 3. So it appears we can make things work even with these lovely little situations that don't appear to be very nice. This is level five quadratics solving. Sorry, level four. <laughs> I apologize. That's level four. So it appears that when that middle term can split in half, we kind of have a sense of what we need to make a perfect square. Okay, let's move on to level five. In fact, I'll save it for a separate video. It is already at eight minutes here. I'll make a separate one for that.